uh, meeting will be the final meeting of our, of our program meeting uh, for the year, and you're all invited back. So, uh, my story. So, uh, this uh, Tuesday that uh, I was uh, at my dentist, and, and he had a new dental hygienist. And so, she was from Haddon Heights, and we played the game, where are you from, so forth. I said, well, you're not, probably not familiar with Hamilton. She said, Bagliani. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. <laughs> So I've often thought that you know, if somebody had to Google Hamilton, that they would have come up with three things. One is, of course, blueberries. And the second would be the uh, Lady of Mount Carmel ceremony on the 16th. And the third would be Bagliani. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, as I spoke to... I think that would be the first. All right. <laughs> so as I, as I uh, spoke to people about our upcoming uh, schedule, that uh, when I mentioned the word, the magic word Bagliani, that, that, that oh yeah, we, we want to be there for that one. So it was like having an interview with a star or stars. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, with that, I uh, want to uh, introduce our speaker for the evening, uh, Paul Bagliani. By the way, Paul is a uh, graduate of uh, St. Joe's and, uh, and uh, Stockton, I believe. Yes. And uh, anyway, so welcome. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. What's the time for you? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Paul Bagliani. On behalf of the Bagliani family, I would like to express our most sincere thanks to the Historical Society of Hamilton. We would like to thank all of you for being recognized here tonight, but perhaps more importantly, we thank you for all the hard work that you're doing by highlighting all of the notable families and for their contributions to our great town and community, preserving them for generations to come. Again, we are humbled and very proud to play a part in our tremendous town and extend our many thanks to all. Back at the turn of the last century, the early 1900s, many of our ancestors faced political uncertainty and severe poverty in our motherland of Italy. Historical records show that between 1880 and 1924, more than 4 million Italians fled their home in search of a better opportunity in the new world. As Columbus and Vespucci did nearly 400 years earlier, our Italian ancestors would embark on a journey unsure of what lie ahead. They fled everything they ever knew, filled with the hope of endless opportunity in the new world. Most were simply in search of a better life for themselves and their families. Others planned on leaving their families behind, coming to America to find work, with the hopes of returning back home to Italy. The Italian people heard of the promise of America, the streets that were paved in gold and its beautiful and spacious lands. Our ancestors took a chance on a better future. Not knowing what would come of their journey, they pushed forward anyway at coming to America. The Baglianis, Bagliani in Italian, hailed from the town of Castel Ceriolo in the province of Alessandria in the northern Italian region of Piemonte. While many of the Baglianis headed for South America, Argentina and Brazil specifically, ours headed for the United States. Our family patriarch, Angelo Bagliani, left Italy from the port of Genoa and landed in the US in 1901. Angelo was born in 1879 to Giovanni and Irene Ricci Bagliani, and was just 22 years old when he arrived at Ellis Island with his then wife, Maria Foco Bagliani, and an uncle named Mariano. Angelo and Maria would settle for a short time with relatives in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, before heading south to Vineland, New Jersey. Uncle Mariano would continue on his journey to South America, joining with family members that were already there. It wasn't long until Angelo was joined in America by the rest of his family from Italy, his father and mother, Giovanni and Irene, 
and three sisters, Maria, Pauline, and Carrie. Angelo and his wife Maria would settle on Elmer Road in South Vineland and go on to have six sons, John, Joseph, Frank, Michael, Angelo Jr., and Charles. Of the six, Francis Frank Bagliani was the third, born in America in 1905. Frank grew up helping his father Angelo on their farm and was a very hard worker and was extremely intelligent. All the brothers were self-taught and could do anything, farming, construction, drive trucks, electrical work, and so on. There's nothing they couldn't do. He would go on to marry Margaret Olivieri from Jersey City, New Jersey, whose family lineage also traced their roots back to Alessandria in Piemonte, Northern Italy. Together, they would start their lives in Vineland. Frank and his brothers followed the lead of their father, Angelo, and found their work in the fertile fields of Vineland as vegetable farmers and truckers. As we all know, hard work, dedication, and sacrifice are the hallmarks of the Italian-American experience, and our family was no different. In 1937, my grandfather, Francis Charles Bagliani, Jr., was born an only child to Frank and Margaret. He would go on to graduate from Vineland High School and begin his lifelong career as a butcher with a dream of one day owning his own store. In 1957, Francis would meet Maria Injimi of Hamilton at a wedding and the two fell in love. They went on to marry and begin their life together. My grandmother, Maria Injimi, was born in 1939, also an only child, to Antonio Tony Injimi and Vincenzina Jenny Injimi. She was a Benvenuto. Both of Maria's ancestors, the Benvenutos of Landisville and the Injimis of Hamilton, trace their roots back to the town of Gesso in Messina, Sicily, as does about all of Hamilton. <laughs> An only child, my grandmother was very close to her mother and her beloved Benvenuto cousins. And our first cousin, her first cousin, Joe, joins us tonight with the family back there, Joe and Jimmy. She was a proud graduate of St. Joseph High School, class of 1956. I often talk with the Italian Italians in the food business that are from Italy and travel back and forth to New York and California, and they when they ask us about, they ask me about our family origin and story, they don't understand why, how a Northern Italian would marry a Southern Italian. Because <laughs> yeah. it didn't happen in Italy. It just didn't happen. But it, it happened in America. It was in 1959 when Francis and Maria had an opportunity to, perch, uh, to purchase an existing food market on 12th Street in Hamilton. Frank and Margaret were an integral part of this process as Frank had sold his farm in Vineland and added the money from the farm sale to what my grandparents had earned and saved as his contribution to his son's dream. With the help of Frank and Margaret, Francis and Maria would embark on their dream together in Hamilton and in the fall of 1959, Bagliani's Food Market was born. My grandparents, along with my great-grandparents, Frank and Margaret, would move from Vineland to Hamilton and live right above the store. My grandfather, which is where all the boys were born and raised, right above the store. You can imagine that. <laughs> my, uh, my grandfather worked endlessly, hours upon hours, his entire career as a butcher, rarely stopping even the rest. He was proud of his work and proud of his store, but things weren't always easy. In fact, nothing was easy. Back then, Hamilton had several competing Italian food markets. It didn't help business back then that my grandfather was considered an outsider in town because he was born and raised in Vineland. <laughs> However, my grandmother was able to be the balancing act for him as the Injimis were deeply rooted Hamiltonians. The work was hard, the days were long. Frank and Margaret would help wherever they could Margaret would help at the cashier. Frank helped anywhere he could, socket shelves, cleaning up wherever he could, and in time would help my father, 
Francis III when they began building their produce department. My grandparents would then start building a family of their own. Again, six boys. Vincent, Victor, my father, Francis III, John, followed years later by A.J. and Stephen. A large family of their own, fitting for my grandparents as they were two only children. The work was double time as family life and the store were being built simultaneously. Remember during these times, there was much sacrifice as it was a struggle to keep the business in business, let alone trying to raise four boys and then two more. As time went on, the family grew, eventually so did the store. Vince, Victor, and John helped where they could, but ultimately would go on their own journeys. It wasn't until my father, Francis III, graduate of St. Joe in 1982, that the store began to expand its offerings. My father, Fran, current president of the company, took a very small produce department, and ultimately the store as a whole, and built it into what it is today. The best in the area. I'm allowed to brag about this part because he's not only my role model, he's my father. <laughs> He is and was the driving force behind the business and its expansion from the early 1980s through to today. It was not only from the work ethic instilled in him from my grandfather Francis and great-grandfather Frank, but it was his natural business acumen, relentless ded dedication, drive and passion to do better. My father sought out only the best in quality products for the best value and price. It was through my father's vision and dedication, drive and sacrifice, our paths would cross with some of the largest and most influential food companies in the nation, and even beyond, continues to this day. <clears throat> through these numerous strong relationships, alongside with my father's, my grandfather's life's work, his cherished meat department, sausage, and his own impeccable never-ending work ethic, my grandmother's recipes and those of her family, and the addition of AJ and Steven, who both worked extremely hard in all departments of the store, that the store would continue to grow, proudly serving the great people of the town of Hamilton, and now many regulars from all over New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, and beyond. A proud fun fact, as a history buff myself, our products have been enjoyed at the White House by four United States presidential administrations. My grandparents also wouldn't believe today our sausage, meatballs, and brajol are actually being uh, enjoyed all across the country as we now ship nationwide every single week. Today, my father, along with his youngest brothers, my uncles, AJ and Steven, are joined by me and my younger brother, Matt, who's not with us tonight, but soon we'll be welcoming, it, welcoming in the next generation of Baglianis in the coming weeks. And of course, my cousin Rebecca. We are all proudly involved establishing the fourth generation of family operation as we enter into our 63rd year of business. <clears throat> as, many, as many of you know, the story of the Italian American experience is one that many of us share. Our ancestors dared to dream bigger dreams for themselves and their families. They left everything they ever knew behind, hoping for a better tomorrow. It's this determination that binds us as a, pride, as a proud people in this great country and especially in this great town. Hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. We have our faith in God and in our family and use both as our guiding pillars. Our ancestors came to this country with nothing. They came to this country and never found the streets of gold. So they went to work, building the great cities all across the country. Many found employment in low wage, manual job, manual labor jobs, and worked their way all the way up. Many from this town. We just kept working and working harder. We believed in America, we believed in Hamilton, we were determined to make this our home and to do it with pride, leaving it better than when we found it. 
Examples of this are endless. We are all part of this great American story. We are all part of the story of Hamilton. The story is not over. As our family story continues, so does the story of our great town and all of its people. Thank you all. Questions? Wasn't very long, but all we do is work. So. <laughs> Not much to us. That's a grocery business. I have a question. I don't yes. know if this was just an experience that my sister and I had, or if maybe we heard of older children in the area. But I know when we were little, we would go to Baglands, and I guess it was your great grandfather would give us Tootsie Rolls. Mm -hmm. And then my sister right. would always run and cover her face. Because here would come Maria Baglani, wanting to pinch her cheeks really hard. Was <laughs> that just something that happened to us, or was that like a common occurrence? Yeah. I've heard plenty of stories. Is that true? I know. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> I get a lot. Of, I get a lot of, uh, especially the the uh, Margaret with the book, and every time you would owe three cents for your popsicle or whatever, she, she kept the ledger. What, what, what was owed? Thirteen cents, yeah. six cents. I have a question. And you who have exactly? A who exactly was from Messina? Who was from Gesso. Messina, Sicily? Gesso. So that would have been the engine, uh, my, my, the Injimi side. My grandmother Maria. Your grandmother. Her father, her father's side, the Injimis. Okay. And her mother's side, the Benvenutos. Your grand, your grandparents. Both, yep. My grandmother's side. Right, right. And then the Baglianis are from the north. <laughs> Got to keep that all straight. <laughs> Rough. A lot of Francis's and Franks. Yeah. <laughs> Bouncing all around. Six kids, six boys, twice. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that there's still back in the that are farming in Vineland. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, they're still farming. Just are they still farming? farming? They were farming and, yeah. up until recently. I don't know if they still are. Mike just passed. Mickey passed. Our, yeah, our, my grandfather's first cousin, Michael, he just passed yeah. at Christmas last year, right? Who graduated from St. Joe in the 80s? Your, your dad. Me, My father. And John. And John. Brother John. Okay. 82 and John was 83. We came in clusters of two. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent and Victor were the two years year apart. And All then right, 17 and then, years later, yes. AJ and Stephen. And then AJ and Stephen. <laughs> and <laughs> in the night. <laughs> You were 56. Oh, yeah. So 82, you're almost as old as She always said. She always said. You were graduating. I graduated. We died. 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 Those guys. So Landis got mad and went to Vineland. Right. Burns, when they first tried to populate Hamilton, they went to took got people from southern Italy to come over to Gesso. There's a story that says that Landis, when he went to Vineland, he um, tried to get people from northern Italy, which answered a lot of questions that I always had about Vineland because it was just a little more. Mm -hmm upscale or whatever, you know that, right? That was always the, that's why I... So I wondered, um, your great-grandfather, or I guess it was your great-grandfather, um, did he come from Connecticut because of that? You know, does anybody know? I don't know the answer to that. Because they must have been recruiting them. Yeah, there. What, what they did, excuse me, Angela, oh. what, what they did was they went to Windsor Lot. First they all went to, they all went to, uh, to uh, Ellis Island, okay. and then they they kind of went to Jer North Jersey. Right. They, Street, my right. grandfather heard that there was a lot of Italians populated in Windsor Lock, mm -hmm. so he thought they would have a better chance. They yeah. started school in Windsor Lock. They only went to six, like sixth grade education, right? Mm -hmm. And they moved when they were in there. They got word that they were farming in Vineland, so they were farm. He was a farmer from back in Italy, Angelo. Right. So he moved the mall, the boys to because yeah. they were. They were fighting bad, and in, in Windsor Locks, they were very anti-Italian. Okay. The school systems, mm -hmm. and they 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 were fighting. They were trying to beat them out of school all the time. Okay. So they would gather all the six brothers and 
they were tough. When you got one, you got all six of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went, ended up moving to Vineland, and then Vineland, that's when they got the farmland, they acquired yeah. farmland. My one uncle was the head, he was the president of the Vineland Chicken Auction for years. Mike, mm -hmm. Uncle Mike, uh, my, um, my father's uncle. And uh, Grandpa Frank was into farming and vegetable farmer. He right. bought his property on Sherman Avenue. And uh, then he, he ended up, he actually worked for every, he did everything, Grandpa Frank. He was an electrician. Yeah, Paul said that. He was a truck driver. He worked for yeah. uh, E.P. Henry, built Ocean City, delivered all the septic tanks to Ocean City when it was cool. just an empty strip of sand. Cool. Yeah. So that's, but that also goes back to Italy being, the southern Italians being the traditional farmers, a poorer area of Italy historically, right. and the northern, that was the animus and still is to this day, mm -hmm. the northern Italians. Well, it's like you said, they really never had yeah. a yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, when my mom went to Italy recently, the last few years with her with the group, and she was on a bus trip in Sicily, and the driver was a Bagliani from North Jersey. <laughs> and he, said, and she, he read the name on the itinerary, he said, this can't oh, be right. <laughs> how are you, you know, how are you from Sicily? And then she, they got to talking, yeah. and oh, relatives oh, from the north. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> now, I didn't have a question. I was mm -hmm. going to tell you, you talked about um, your sausage and meatballs. And I have taken many a meatball to Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my daughter lives in Colorado. Very good. <laughs> me, not being Italian, couldn't make a meatball. <laughs> and so I'd pack them, freeze them, and take them out there. One time coming back, the plane was delayed. And I thought, oh my gosh, these things are going to be spoiled. But we made it. There you go. <laughs> and the meatballs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How long do you have to live in Hamilton to be considered a Hamiltonian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it ever works. No, I don't think that's true anymore. It used to be. Yeah. Well, I've been here 22 oh, yeah. years, and I still can't get it. It wasn't ready. Oh, oh, I was not going to say you're not going to have a tell you. Yes. <laughs> 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 I thought that was so hard. Actually, somebody be. came to the canoe club today, the heart and soul was talking, and, and they, she even said, you're a Hamiltonian. Because somebody must have said that. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't born here. And um, yeah. she said, doesn't matter, you're a Hamiltonian. <laughs> Joanna Johnson. Uh -huh. But, um, you got a great I town here, here, though. Got past that. Just a, just a good town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Can you use your plans for the uh, sewer? Or, uh, we have some plans at the at the same location. Okay. So hopefully we can see them through. Enlarging that parking lot. That was going to be parking lot. Yeah, parking, right. lot. <laughs> parking lot's a nice addition yeah. in yeah. itself. Yeah. 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 Much safer. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The whole other side to develop. <laughs> <Got the side. laughs> That's the next move. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the next next year. Yeah. 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 And Zach, my buddy. I got to say, just you know, in, in traveling around uh, to go up, coming back and forth to Connecticut to see our daughter, or whatever. But I don't know how many times I've come off of the AC Expressway, and you get on that, you know, you get on the the, the exit or coming up the other way, and sure as heck they go. They go down and they pull in the back. You know, we we followed more cars in that you know, always bail. You know, coming yeah, off the highway, uh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, totally it's humbling. Uh, yeah, I don't have any words for it. I like it when you have a police officer there for Christmas. That was always fun. <laughs> now we don't need it. Now that we have a safer outlet, but mm -hmm. that was always the thing. How about you cut your cheese? You're outside now. Yeah. Right? That's a, another thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> that got a little crazy. Too crazy. Yeah, yeah. Too much. Too much. Yeah, we don't put on productions. We just work. No, we, st we stopped it a few years. Even before COVID. Too much. I mean, we still cut the cheese. We just don't. We just. Yeah. No more event. No more circus. Everybody came. And it was good. Was like, and then it got too big. And then, and then it got out of control. We were smart enough to pull the plug, I think. Became we still sell the cheese. 
but yeah. it became too much. Yeah. Yes. Just yeah. not what we are. Mm -hmm. We don't care about the fanfare. <laughs> <laughs> You're right by the young store that I've seen <clears throat> in the last 20 years that has ricotta sec for Grady and ricotta sec for Yeah, two different kinds. You don't, you don't find them in stores. It's tough. But you got the best variety of cheese around. It's tough. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. What, what makes. Thank you, fellow speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in, yeah, a lot has to be in. said about yeah. Yeah. the way That's we just what, treat people. Right. Yes, absolutely. Treat it's, people the way we want to treat people, and you know, uh, the staff very yeah. important. I don't think I mentioned that, but I don't think we could make it 63 years in business with a lot of key staff that's been around for a long time and key people back in the different time. So without you, them, that's a good point. Care. That's a good point. But without the food them. is amazing. Yeah. And the food. It's amazing. Thanks. Okay. So we have, have, um, we have this recorded and mm -hmm. so that hopefully for posterity and, yes. uh, and our, the idea was that uh, on Saturdays we were open on two Saturdays a month, and we can play it. You know, and so uh, we have a, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for all the work you guys do.